What is the worst advice you've ever received? Ulrich Zauber said. In 1984 I was told by a friend's mom that computers were a fad and that I shouldn't major in computer science in college. I ignored that advice, it was obvious even then this was a crazy take. Nibbles McGiblet said. When my abusive ex-husband strangled me and lifted me up by my neck to slam my back against a brick wall, that was almost the worst. When I called 911 for a subsequent incident and told the cop about that, she said people who are strangled by their abuser are 40x more likely to be killed by that abuser someday. I bailed 27 years married to that guy life is so much better now. Sure, I no longer live in a house but I'd rather sleep in the living room of a one bedroom apartment with my daughter in the only bedroom for the rest of my life than spend another moment there I with him. I can work now, he wouldn't let me. I can listen to music now, he wouldn't let me. I can have friends now, he wouldn't let me. I can go places, do things, laugh without being asked what's so funny. In an accusatory voice. I can earn money and buy food and choose what to wear without worrying that he will get mad. The worst really is getting murdered by an abusive partner. I thought that would happen if I left. So far so good. Sorry for the tangent. Boba Federgini said. At least once a week my whole life my mom said to me be careful who you marry. My aunt had married a raging alcoholic who died drunk driving, and my uncle married a psycho with borderline personality disorder. We could all see that marrying the wrong person could screw up your whole life, especially if you had kids with them. My siblings and I took the advice, and the two of us that are married are very happy we waited for the right person even if it meant not getting married until our 30s. Optimus Pork said. On leaving a 40-hour-a-week consultancy job with 21 days annual leave, to go to a 37-hour-a-week client side job with 28 days holiday, and with a pay rise. The boss said to me, you don't make your career on your days off. Too right mate, but what I will do is look after my young family and mental well-being. Ginger Ninja 90 said. LOL right? The world's worst acid reflux, food aversions, puking for months, then sleepless nights, sore nipples, stitches, I could go on. But it doesn't matter bc you'll love the kid you never wanted in the first place. My sister had had three because she keeps thinking babies will fix her relationships. She doesn't like kids. Says she loves hers. But she doesn't really. My mom convinced her that this is how life is. I don't understand why people think this way or give this advice. Yuck. Get Pen said. When I was fresh out of the Navy and going to college on the GI Bill, my dad tried repeatedly to get me to drop out of college, he honestly thought that pursuing a biology degree at no cost to myself was a waste of my time. It wasn't until I started my master's degree that he was finally supportive of my educational goals. He tells me he's proud of me, and when I remind him that he tried to get me to drop out he denies it. ODHU Texas said. Felt this. I worked at a big pizza chain doing delivery while in college. The store manager was a huge jerk almost like a movie character. He drove a not quite new leased Corvette and talked about how he cleared XX dollar sign a year. Kept telling me how college was a scam and how most people with high school degrees are just as smart and so on and so on. Eventually I put in my two weeks notice when I was about to start my first job with my degree and he wanted to know my salary and me being petty I told him. Pikachu face. Okay I'm off my soapbox. And no. Not everyone has to go to college. Vike 127 said. Not advice but something similar to this. My brother and his fiancée were expecting twins and they were stillborn. A family friend told my brother multiple times at the funeral this is all part of God's plan and everything happens for a reason. I don't think there is a more tactless thing you can say after someone loses a child. Unusual Bellows said. Went to the GP with my Tenmo son who had been struggling with a cold for a while and wasn't improving. She told me to rub Vicks on his throat, because it is absorbed through the skin, and to make him vomit to bring up phlegm. Later that day he was admitted to hospital with bronchiolitis. I refused to see her for any reason until recently when I didn't have a choice, and she gave me the same shitty advice for a sinus infection I did for three weeks. Mama Sujahara said. You should let it pinch you. It won't hurt that much. It was the biggest crawdad I ever saw and I was maybe like 10 fishing with my dad. He didn't think I would be stupid enough to do it, but I wanted to impress him. The chaos that then ensued, 
I picked it up and let it pinch the soft skin between my thumb and hand promptly scream in pain. Dad laughing his ass off tried to help just to be pinched by the other claw on the back of his hand. This cycle of continuous pinching continues as we stupidity try to help one another then finally we get it removed and my dad says to body slam it so I throw it as hard as I can back into the lake. Toxicity 5675 said. Smile in your mugshot, because it's a picture that's gonna be out there forever. This can and will be used against you in a court of law. Prosecution, Exhibit A The Defendant's Mugshot. This person is smiling. Does this look like the face of someone who is sorry? Someone who is remorseful? No. They are smiling despite the fact that they could have injured someone or worse. That is why we are seeking the maximum penalty. To show them that this is not something to be smiling about. Thifuzibni one said. My mom would do this to us a lot because, objectively, we had better childhood than she had. And that's fair, but constantly reminding us of that fact did not help her relationship with us kids. Finally, as an adult, my sister told her she'd been terrible in helping us cope with the drama of growing up. And she started in with, well of course I never thought your problems were serious. Because when I was your age I had two, insert rant. So then I interrupted and said, mom, when a friend tells you their mother died, do you comfort them, or do you say buck up, lots of people's mothers died today. And it finally clicked for her. Mom and I have a much better relationship now. Plantain said. Similar story here. My uncle had a fourth grade education. Had to quit school young to take care of his mom and siblings. Ended up starting his own electrical contracting business after he got out of the military. Put his little brother through college, who ended up becoming a nationally respected theater director. You'd never know it to look at him or even after you met him, but the man was loaded. Any strip mall, supermarket, restaurant, etc. that opened up in his town knew his name and used his services. Died relatively young, late 50s early 60s I arc, with enough to support my aunt for years after even without working for the last few years of his life due to kidney problems. Merciless idiot said. That's a funny story indeed. She complained because I was overweight. I was 11, went everywhere with my bike, went to the swimming pool every Sunday morning, every Saturday in primary school, and as far as I can remember, I probably had no more than one kilogram of excess weight at the time. She asked my grandmother to buy only soy ice cream during summer. And the first time I got some ice cream after dinner and found out there was only the soy base one I didn't even complain until my mouth and my throat started feeling itchy, which happened right after I ate the first, small, spoon. I said so, and she basically forced me to finish it. After the second spoon my face looked like Jocelyn Wildenstein after the surgery and I could barely breathe. Did they take me to the hospital? Hell no. They allowed me to stop eating that ice cream, basically said I was a pussy and gave me a bland antihistaminic pill. Luckily, in a couple of days I was back to normal. Unfortunately, my friends spent the rest of the summer asking me how much did I charge for a blowjob. It was worse than the previous summer, when I spent three months being called desert shoes because my mother forced me to wear a pair of cheap brown sandals all the summer by basically hiding all of my other shoes. Her excuse? It's hot outside, so your feet will breathe. Well, then don't send Emmy around wearing only sweatsuits you dumb bitch. Vanish7 said. There was this one time a very attractive girl from my hometown took an interest in me, and started messaging me on Facebook. She was the smart, good person beautiful girl that was always in long relationships, absolutely not getting around, the kind of girl you would love to take home to your parents and who every guy wanted to be dating. Anyways, my fucking idiot friend was watching me talk to her and was like dude you're doing it wrong, let me take over and completely submarine the conversation with a couple douchy, idiotic messages, and she stopped responding. And that was it, my chance with her was gone. I'll never forget his stupid face laughing about it like ha ha no well, whatever dude. Fuck you Dan. Selena messed up here said. You just need to get over it and move on as advice to cope with experiencing sexual assault. Edit. For everyone asking messaging me about how someone can heal from trauma like this, or other traumas and losses, there are several trauma researchers that discuss how trauma affects our bodies and the different modalities for treatment. The three that helped me the most are 1. Bessel van der Kolk, The Body Keep the Score, 2. Peter A. Levine, Waking the Tiger, Healing Trauma, 3. 
Stephen W. Porges, The Polyvagal Theory, The Transformative Power of Feeling Safe. Treatment methods vary and our bodies respond differently based on our experiences, so it may take more than one approach and it may take more than one specialist therapist to help. No, you are not alone and that you fellow survivors are cheering on your recovery. Senior Cisco 33 said, A friend of my mother's, close enough to be my aunt, talked me into applying for a credit card when I was 22 for the sole purpose of maxing it out, getting as many big toys as I could, and then filing for bankruptcy cause she said this country is so silly, threatening something like that when it just disappears a few years later. So I got the first CC offered, 25k limit with what I now know was the worst most predatory APR, and I maxed it out on utter bullshit over the course of two years. It messed me up so bad. As she gradually devolved from funny cynical ex-hippie boomer to wheelchair-bound dementia patient I started trying to build some semblance of a workable adult life, got married, had a kid. And that bankruptcy followed me into my mid-30s. Even though it's past me now and my credit score is finally in the mid-70s I still have to divulge yes anytime I'm asked by a bank or a lender about a bankruptcy in my history. I want to transport myself back in time as a now 50s year old and kick my own ass right before I signed that form. My god, why do adults sometimes tell kids to do this kind of shit? Boomers, man. Casey 12297 said. I scraped someone's truck in her apartment complex a few weeks after I first got my license at 18, in my defense he was very over the lines and it was the only available spot. Called my dad in a panic because I didn't know what to do, he told me to go park in the lot of the apartments next to us and just pretend nothing happened unless someone confronts me. New and inexperienced, I listened. Horrible advice, someone saw it and the guy found which apartment I was in. He was pissed but more understanding when he realized I was just a kid, to a guy in his 40s I guess 18 is a kid, and explained what happened. We worked insurance stuff out and I learned to never take my dad's advice. Lower Worry 9156 said. Funny enough the only time that advice by stupid adults worked out for me. Turned to everyone from parents to teacher about the guy in elementary who would bully me and throw my things in trash with no explanation. They told me that same line. So after three years of that shit I went up to him and was like, It's okay, I understand. You like me and just can't express yourself. Of course he said EWWW no I hate you and I told him well, that's what the teachers and my mum are saying. They see you pull my hair and think it is the C-U-T-E-S-T thing ever. He never even talked to me again and I only wish I had done so sooner. But like. Only time that advice got me anywhere cause I used it to reverse psyche my bully into fucking off. Guy from Death Valley said. I think people misuse that phrase a lot. Just be yourself is supposed to be used when you try to be different than you are, say, to impress someone. You should be yourself, not play a role to fit in with others, that it's okay to be different than the rest. But others seem to use it as an excuse not to improve themselves. I'm just myself they say while they aggressively talk to the waiter that takes two minutes too long for their taste. Not exactly bad advice, just badly used advice really. Nia Throwaway 9 said. Not just porn. People talk about it really casually, too. AII she let me put it in her butt, and that's it. At most, I've heard about needing a certain diet and showering or douching. No idea about how long prep actually takes. Otherwise. There's no information unless you seek it out. But just like trying to convince your FWB to wear a condom in the rise of ass eating, I assume there's a lot of unsafe and hot mess sex because everyone is in the dark and trying to stay there to maintain that air of sexy. Sorry for rambling. I'm not young, just inexperienced and uncool. The thought of butt stuff in general freaks me out. All I can think of are germs, infections, pink eye, straight up poop, etc. And now there's pain? All because no one can be ours to do their research or let a bitch know when to prep. I am the knight said. I've had multiple patients advise me not to get the COVID vaccine because, insert any number of various conspiracy theories. I always try to explain why vaccination is a good idea if I think they will be receptive to hearing it, but usually I just tell them I already got vaccinated last December and move on. Please people, get vaccinated. Unless you have some kind of medical reason not to get the vaccine, please get it. It's the only way this is going to get better. Noon Martini said. 
I was in a really bad relationship in my late teens. We both were toxic F and I was only there because he was my friend and I didn't want to hurt him and he kinda guilted me into it. I asked my evangelical mom for advice and she told me that since we were having sex, we should get married and it would sort itself out. I broke up with him after we got into a knockdown, drag out fight when he tried to kill my cat, because I loved her more, and completely stopped asking my mother for relationship advice. Hard Place said. So this goes against my advice too, but there are exceptions when renting is better than buying and it always depends on your own situation. Definitely buy if you plan to stay somewhere for a while and want to long-term investment but renting is a viable option when you either can't get to place to own due to your own circumstances, aren't staying somewhere for a reasonable amount of time and or don't care to put the effort in to later use the property to your advantage, that is renting to others or vacation home, or the markets are too volatile for your liking and renting is the better alternative. Even with these specific circumstances, I would still always recommend people to buy unless you literally have no option. Nia Throwaway 9 said. The advice should be have a plan, have a good plan, and have a backup. Quit this ridiculous push against college uni because of how much it costs. Like, fuck, you can't become a doctor with a free online course. Shit costs money. And stop insisting that trades are the magic carpet ride to success. Fat paycheck or not, not everyone is interested or equipped for it. I know. Loans suck. Blindly going to school sucks. Having a useless degree sucks but certain jobs require certain degrees. Sanders 4289 said. When my mom was dying in hospice, a co-worker of mine told me I should at least let her family know, even though my mom told me she didn't care if they knew or not. Well, I let them know, and I definitely regretted it. The sister and her kids made it an entire dramatic ordeal and had to be removed from the room. Her brother didn't even call or text. Just sent his dingbat wife who didn't even notice my mom had already passed. Haven't heard from either of them in the year since she's passed. My mom was right. Watts Tatter said. I was told to count my lucky stars by a man who was fitting me for a splint. I had attempted suicide via overdose on sleeping pills and ended up with compartment syndrome which basically means I cut off circulation in my arm by laying on my side for too long while I was overdosing. I spent an entire month in the hospital due to a cascade effect of organ failure. They had me in a medically induced coma for two weeks had to relearn how to walk, breath normal, talk, etc. Anyways, after two major surgeries I have a giant nasty scar as well as a few smaller ones from where the surgeon had to cut open to relieve the pressure. I literally couldn't move my left arm at all. My fingers were completely stiff and unmovable as well. As professional drummer this was very depressing. This guy seriously told me I'm lucky that I literally destroyed being able to pursue my musical passion and I'm lucky that I didn't die, even though that's exactly what I wanted. The OD happened beginning of December and since then I have regained a lot of use of my left arm. I still have permanent nerve damage in my arm, hand, and foot, damaged sciatic nerve. If I wanted to die before I was permanently disabled, why the F would I want to be alive now? Sorry this is so long and I'm kind of rambling. TL, DR, guy says I should feel lucky and happy that I didn't die when I overdosed attempting suicide and I am now permanently disabled. Natalie B12 said. Stop feeling depressed and do something. You're not doing anything to change your situation, you lack initiative. I couldn't believe a friend would advise me this when she clearly knew I was going through a hard time, battling depression and living a nightmare in my own house. Lack of initiative, really? Seeing my therapist every week, my psychiatrist every month and taking meds to help with my situation, when my family is against it, how dare she says that absurd to me? When I told her I was really hurt by her insensitive words, she tells me I'm overreacting, being too sensitive and that I misunderstood her. After her response, I haven't spoken to her since. Labakan said. This is kinda advice-ish, but mostly an ultimatum. TW, cutting. Back when I was really deep into my depression, I was cutting myself with a pencil sharpener blade. I did it because I thought I deserved the pain as punishment for being a useless or bad person. My sister found out and told my mom, who then called from the living room you can either come smoke this bowl with us or I'm calling an ambulance. I didn't and she didn't call. She ended up in jail for drug charges that led to said sister's death. I'm doing better now. Seeing a doctor and everything.
Acer117 said. Don't try I started playing soccer at a really late age, 16, I tried out as a junior and got cut. Someone quit and I was offered a spot on JV. I played with a friend in that team and I asked him what I should I work on after the season so I wouldn't get cut again. He literally told me if I were you I wouldn't even try and I wasn't good enough and there was too much talent on varsity so I should try out for basketball instead of soccer. I didn't let it bother me instead I used it as fuel. I started playing anywhere I could. I make the team the next season and get invited to play at the local junior college. Fast forward two years and I'm on the front page of the newspaper in our town signing a full soccer scholarship to play in Kansas. One day I see him as I'm getting food and I ask him what he's been doing. He turned into a giant pothead and worked at smoke shop and was telling me how he saw me in the paper and he knew I'd be good one day. I shook his hand and never saw him again. Tour 79 said. I was a manager at a very young age, I knew the job, but I didn't know the people I was commanding nor my management or jewels. Everybody, mom, dad, former manager, owner, patrons of the establishment, co-workers, they all had advice, most of it from people who had no idea what job and my feelings were. I tried to take all that advice, instead of just listening to what was inside of me, and got me from the bottom to top. None of it was bad on its own, some of it was very self-serving for the person giving it. It pulled me 100 ways instead of just continuing what I did to get myself there. 20 years later I have it figured out, but the first few months were really rough. Infinite Depth 7242 said. Pretty much everything except advice from few books. Going and not going to university is terrible advice. How do you choose? Basically decide how into a profession you are and if you can make it solo or under apprenticeship. If not then maybe decide if you can handle a bullshit job in a bullshit profession, then take university, and if you're not sure try to land some non-min wage jobs and don't quit until you get a new one. Basically if the advice is one sentence it's probably trash. Philosub0610 said. Don't apply for any scholarships, there aren't that many and your grades aren't good enough to get any. My high school guidance counselor told me that during my senior year before college. There are thousands of college scholarships available to all types of students of all walks of life. I think that conversation was when I first learned that even if someone has a PhD, they can still be dumb and ignorant. Next said. That house is far too cheap, son. You don't want a giant attached garage and swimming pool to look after. $75,000 just seems way too cheap for a home like this. Let's get out of here. Something isn't quite right. Turns out. That was the selling price because the owner was a friend, had already built another home, and needed to sell this one to break even. He was looking to short sell because he was in a hurry. Another friend of his bought a house for $70,000 and paid cash. Resold the home a year and three months later almost doubled his purchase price. Fuck you dad. You're a depressed naysayer's asshole. Needless to say I never ask him for financial advice ever again. Fucking jerk.